Okay, here we go. Bugs. Lots of bugs. I don't Great like googly moogly, that's a lot of bugs. That's a lot of bugs. The infestation of the Karaji has plagued Silithus for thousands of years. But how did these creepy crawlies get here? To answer that question, from the moon. we need to travel thousands and thousands of years back to when Azeroth was first created. What the fuck? Infestation? Way, way, way back during the ordering of Azeroth, Omkaraj was built by the Titanforge minions of the Titans, and watched over by the Titanic Watcher Ra. In Omkaraj, the Tolvir and the Anubisath were created to maintain the city and keep track of lower repo- Wait, so... Ra Din? Wait, what? Ra Din made the fucking Omkaraj? What the fuck? Repositories. But their most important job was making sure the old god Cthune remained imprisoned within AQ. Yeah? Everything was happy-go-lucky until uh -huh. Ra checked his Twitter and found out his creators, the Titans, were slain by Sargeras. Oh the shit! The mad titan and leader of the Legion. This made Ra very, very sad and he went, <laughs> Fuck this shit, I'm out! And traveled to the Vale of Eternal Blossoms to go take a thousands of years long depression nap. Yeah, that's about right. Without Ra watching over the kingdom, Cthulhu's corruption slowly started to seep its way into the Tolvir and the Anubisath. And Wait. throughout the span of thousands of years, they were driven mad by the old god's corruption. What the fuck? I had no idea about this. I didn't. Meanwhile, the trolls were busy kicking bug ass in the what northeast the fuck? part of Azeroth. These bugs are called the Akir, who were created by the organic matter seeping from the old gods. <laughs> Wait, so these bug boys are pretty m their old god come? How the fuck is that supposed to work, dude? That's crazy. The trolls were victorious in their war with these exoskeleton freaks, and they okay. fled and split off into three separate colonies. Of one course. fled to the north and turned into the Anubrians, mm -hmm. one fled to the south and turned into the Mantid, and right. the final one traveled down to Ankaraj and turned into the Karaji. Wait, the so... The insectoid race spent they're all thousands the same. of years reproducing and hibernating within the decrepit city. Wow. Waiting for the perfect time to strike. Okay. When's the perfect time to strike? Okay, that's The Night one. Elves in the northern part of Kalimdor wanted to expand their empire and started to scout down to the southern side of the continent. Yeah. Fandral Staghelm, leader of the Kaldurai and its an druids, asshole. wanted to set out on an ambitious quest to regrow the barren wasteland of Silithus. So he sent his son Valstan Staghelm along with a group of druids to investigate the lands, and the party discovered the ancient and seemingly abandoned stronghold of Ankaraj. So they Little didn't even did the know about know it. What would truly be lurking within the depths of the city? I don't think I realized like how old Radin was, and that kind of like it, it, it gives you an appreciation for Li Shin. Cause Lee Shin beat that dude's ass. Like, god damn, man. He's old, yeah. Dude, Lee Shin was a badass. He's as old as Odin? Yeah, I guess so. Surprise, mother. <laughs> Suddenly, an army of innumerable yeah? silithid creatures erupted from underneath the ancient city and swarmed over Wait. every dune, canyon, and barren plain of Silithus. The Night Elves were outnumbered, but so, continued to fight on. Thus began the War of the Shifting Sands. So it's because of the Night Elves. where hundreds of lives were lost on both sides. They caused all the this shit to happen. The Night Elves may have had magic and combat skills, but the Karaji made up for it with their overwhelming amount of numbers. Wow. The battle lasted for months, and against all <laughs> okay, odds, dude. the Night Elves fought the silted creatures yep. all the way back to the heart of the there desert. Victory was in reach, but none of them could have prepared themselves mm -hmm. for what would happen next. Before I start, I'd like to say this is the official lore and what exactly happened on that fateful day. The reason why he's probably saying that is because what you're about to hear is really fucking dumb. And without further ado, okay, I present here we go. to you, the death 
of Valston Staghill. All right. I think that's about the same graphics. Yeah, somewhere sir, around sir, there. Sir, there's something very important I need to tell you. They've kidnapped your son. Oh, we need no. To do so oh, 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 shit. They've kidnapped my what? Oh, no. Yeah, no. I think that's how it works. No. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. This is really good. Uh, oh, no. Oh, my God, dude. Is that good? The brutal death of Valston <laughs> destroyed Fandral's confidence okay. and will to fight. The night elf forces were morally I didn't know his son got killed. That's crazy. All the way out of Silithus into Angoro, then eventually wow. to Neris. In an act of desperation, mm -hmm. Staghelm went to the Caverns of Time, home of the Bronze Dragonflight, to beg right. for their aid against the insectoid menace that was threatening to consume all of So they had to help the, 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 the dragon. But they said no them. because um because they're dragons. Know, they were traveling through time or something. Yeah. But when the Karaji eventually started to attack the Caverns of Time, then they decided to help. The dragons got pissed. But it wasn't only the bronze dragon flight that came to the Night Elf's They aid. said no. In fact, dragons from the red, green, and blue dragon flights oh. helped push back the Karaji forces. But even with the might of the dragons, the war was not a decisive victory. The bronze dragon Garakrond, who must be the bargain bin version of Galakron, yeah. was struck down in the battle by an Anubisaf named Osiren. The stone creation threw an obsidian sword at the dragon. Oh, that's the boss! Crippling him, and he collapsed on the desert floor Damn. and perished as a swarm of flightless insects overwhelmed the noble dragon. Yeah, that's the boss in, uh, in The remnants of this grisly death can still be seen today in Silithus. What the fuck? This is actually crazy. I had no idea there was this much depth in it. Like, honestly, like, back in Vanilla WoW lore, like, the Karaji, I always assumed it's like, Uh, yeah, so, there's some bugs. I gotta, gotta do something about it. And that's about it, dude. I never assumed there would be anything more than that. Well, at least in Classic, because in yeah. Retail Silithus, it's uh, it's a bit compromised. Yeah, a little bit. The Karaji really did give them a run for their money. They had giant obsidian destroyer constructs and Karaji battle guards, yeah. who are these giant monstrosities that run like they just poop their pants. Mm -hmm. And the female counterpart of the battle guards are just really an excuse to get hot chicks in the game. The yeah, most pretty formidable much. foes they had to face are the twin emperors Veklor and Veknalosh, yep. who are twins the size of skyscrapers and empowered by Cthune himself. What the Run! fuck? Run for your lives! That's actually pretty intense hey! now that they say it like that. The dragons Arios, oh Mortheria, and Calistras. Okay made the ultimate sacrifice to push the insects back within a queue. The dragon Anachronos and Fandral Staghelm created that's a the magical barrier outside the time. city, locking anybody from coming in or out. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, those dragons and some of the Karaji can fly, so can't they just fly over yeah. the wall? No, no they can't, because oh, there's also a giant invisible barrier above the wall. Well, the they didn't have flying until Cataclysm, so at this point in time it wouldn't have been a problem for them. Dragonflights gave Fandral the scepter of the Shifting Sands, so if okay. he ever wanted to open the barrier again, he could bang it against the gong outside of the city. But the druid was still pretty Makes torn sense. up about the death of his son, so in a fit of rage and spite, he shattered the scepter, locking the Karaji within the city for the next hundreds of years. Why would he want to open it up? Wait, so why did we ever open it? This is where we're at in Classic. Over time, the Karaji have found a way to slip through the barrier and have started invading lands like Silithus, Tenaris. Wait, yes, yeah, so we just... Alright, we'll just keep, we'll keep watching the video. Tenaris and Feralus. The threat of the War of the Shifting Sands Part 2, Infestation Boogaloo, yeah. is starting to become a very real threat. So the strategic decision was to uh -huh. open up the gates once more and bring the fight to them before they could get any stronger. But first... Okay. About this whole um, destroyed scepter thing. So players are sent on a long oh, quest chain to gather wow. the parts of the scepter. I have a whole video going over that chain, so I won't go over it here. Also, I highly doubt it's canon. I mean, I find it hard to believe in a quest to save the world, we actually help a gnome and a naga become lovers. Furthermore, Lord, I can believe that. 
Like, what, what's wrong with that? Why is that somehow, oh, that's too much? Fuck that. That's completely normal. Yeah, why not? Otherwise, the Scepter Bearer is a random Night Elf Priestess named Shiromar, a character who has no story whatsoever and plays a critical part in this whole event. Okay. So, so that's cool. She's pretty much just an insert for the player character. But right, with the Scepter created, sense. the Might of Kalimdor could be makes assembled. Sense. The Might of Kalimdor is a giant army of Alliance and Horde, led by High Overlord Varrock Sarfang, there it tasked is, dude. with finally putting a stop to Cthun yep. and his minions once and for all. But before we do that, we need supplies. Apparently, it is critical that before we open these gates, yeah. we need these supplies. Of course. 12,000 spotted yellowtail fish. 96,000 peace bloom. 33,000. 96,000 peace bloom. That's a lot. That really is a. That is a lot. Like, why would. Like, t to me, I don't know. I, I, I never contributed to the. I guess I didn't play whenever the war effort was happening, so. I, I guess I never really saw the purpose in it. I, I never got it. I was, in I was selfish. And hundreds of thousands of other random crap. But now that the war effort is funded, we can finally go and put a stop to this ancient Karaji threat. 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 Finally. Finally. Once and for. for, 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 for. <laughs> okay. God damn. You see, like, all the keys flying up in the air? What the fuck? What's your- wait, what's your- what are you guys saying green? Green, green, what, what's your problem, green? What is your problem? Missile alone ram. Missile alone ram. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! Dude, look at the keys, man! Look at the- watch the keys! Look at him, man! It's like- the, it's like a sea of keys. They're just all coming up like a- like a wave in the ocean. That's what I like so much about this. It's fucking amazing. Go back to the raw tweet. Okay, yeah, I'll go right back to that. Where is it here? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, this was this was a really, really good video, guys. I, I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was really, really well put together. I say this is a great video. Uh, it came together really well, and it was funny. It was unique. The guy obviously put a lot of work into it, and I like it a lot. So this is a great video, and that's my opinion.